What's up guys, Tim Halston with Drag Boss Garage and John Kyle with APD. So we're here for another episode of his carb tuning series. John was gracious enough to allow me to come back to his shop so we can get back into depth on tuning the Billet Enforcer by APD. So he had already talked about how to adjust the float level. We talked about adjusting the idle. So now the next thing that we're gonna do, because carbs are complicated when it comes to adjusting because Every little adjustment you make in one area affects the other. So you want to do it in the right order slash sequence. So in this case, what we're going to talk about in this video is how to adjust the accelerator pump clearance, we'll say, the pump arm clearance, which we all know the accelerator pump is right here. And we're talking about the clearance between this spring and this arm. Now back in the day, from my own memory, when I adjusted Hollies, I remember they wanted it all the way open, cracked all the way open, right. and then you check the clearance between the pump arm and the spring, and I think it was like 15 to 20,000 somewhere. Now I had always thought the reason they give you that lash or that gap is because they don't want you bottoming out the pump arm and bending things. Now Randy, who's one of the chief car builders here, was telling me about one of the important things you think about is if you have that pump arm too close to that, you start putting a lot of pressure on this poppet valve. So that's another reason they probably want to have you not have no last, so to speak, or it's immediately touching the pump arm. And it can pop or rip this diaphragm here, the orange poppet valve, and even rip this diaphragm. So that's about my experience with adjusting the accelerator pump. I know on a Holly, when you take it off, when you put it back on, there's a lot of play there. Yeah. I know I'm self-conscious when I change jets or I do something, I make sure I put it back there just the way it was and try to feel that arm. I really don't measure it. I did it once and I don't even check it. Right. So give me some insight on what, how APD likes to deal with accelerator pump adjustments, John. Well, like you said on the Holly Bowl, it is critical that you try to recenter the bowl when you put it on. Now on the newer carburetors, our billet carburetors, the holes are machined smaller, everything lines up. There's not a lot of movement there. So that's not super critical. Okay. The bowl will go back on in its right place. Um, you definitely, as you said, you do not want this to bottom out. You want to have some play at the bottom because if you do not, the ring here on the accelerator pump diaphragm. Yeah, we're gonna show you right here, that little ring right here. Will come down and cut this uh, pop it, which is, Bad. Once it yes. once it does that, then you lose a lot of your squirt, your pump shot. Yep, now, yep. our bowls, we recess this. You can see there's a little recess there that this sets below the surface, just so that you cannot cut that. Let me show them this right now, because people want to see this, and, and they've always commented, we want to see this stuff up close, Tim. So here's what we got. So here's the yellow poppet valve, we'll call it, and it's recessed right in here. You can see that. Right there, you see that recessed area? That's what he's talking about. Because this part will cut that diaphragm out and you'll lose some pump shot. So that's what John was talking about. We, we tried to make it so that even if someone does adjust it wrong, it, it doesn't it rip, rip the pop it. Now, we believe the correct way to set this is to set it after the idle. We've already been through the idle. Yes. So once the idle is set properly, then we want zero gap here. Um, so we basically adjust this, and maybe not zero, maybe maybe three, four thousand is just enough to have some some sort of play. Yes. Because as you put fuel in here, you'll lose that three or four thousand. So you're telling me the weight of the fuel against this diaphragm will move will, it. will bring yeah. it down to zero yes. clearance. Yes. Okay. Now, once again, once the idle's set, yep. what we do is we adjust the screw and nut in the spring so yep. that there's zero gap here. Now, once that's set, it's very critical to make sure that when it is wide open, you also have a small amount of movement. Um, and, and you definitely do not want this to bottom out and collapse this spring. Got it. Um, now, not to get too in depth, yep. and we're trying to do the basic here, but this spring, as heavy as it is, does play a part in the accelerator pump. 
So when you're in the car, when we move things by hand, we, we don't move them very fast. But when you're in the car and you floor it, what yeah. will happen is this spring collapses. So, so this comes down and then it slowly comes out. So if you have this adjusted too far up, it slows down your squirter charge. If you tighten the spring up, then it speeds it up. Okay, I get what so you're that, saying. So that is critical, and you say, well, how can I adjust that spring to be collapsed? That's where the arm comes in. It, you know, there's times that we will slightly bend, bend this arm to allow us to run a, a more collapsed spring setting. Okay. So if you have a car that you, you hit the gas and it instantly has a stumble, like a, a quick boom, boom, then yeah. the chances are tightening the spring up will help that. Now, see, I always thought that when you stumble nailing it, it, it's not usually a rich condition. It's usually a it, lean that condition. That is correct. That is correct. You know, the pump shot isn't covering. Right. And that, and that tightening period. the spring yeah. up and then rebending the arm would help that because the spring will not collapse when you hit the gas pedal. Um, it, let's just say you took this spring off and made this solid. When you yeah. made a couple runs, you would completely and bend this. Stuff. Yes, I get it. Because the force on that's way greater than you think you know, trying to push that diaphragm down at the speed you hit the pedal. Okay. Um, so it's just a, you know, you may not get that far in depth, but the, the spring tension is critical there. You, you want to make sure you don't have a, a nut that's ran all the way to the top, or you want to make sure this spring's not completely collapsed if you're dealing with a carburetor that's already used or sure. someone else has sure. adjusted on. Okay. So basically, to just reiterate the whole process again, obviously it's sitting on the car. You look at it now, you want zero clearance in here. Correct. When it's sitting on the car. Correct. Correct. When the throttle's cracked all the way. Yep. And th this amount of play here is not overly cr critical. I um, mean, we're talking like what? That might be 20 thousandths, 25? Yeah, yes, and a lot of that's going to be dictated by what can profile. Right, which have. is a whole different topic, and that's what we were talking about. We don't want to get into that tuning aspect right. yet. Right. The, okay. the important thing is if this is adjusted like this to where there's a gap here, you have all of this throttle movement yeah. that you you have no squirt. Okay. And that's where stumbles and hesitations okay. come in. Talking about a drag racing application, we'll put it like that. In a street application, would it be beneficial to have, let's say, twenty five or thirty thousand? There are times we do that. If, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. now you're, you're you're in a street, you're you're trying to take off from a stop sign or light. You kind of want that throttle transitioned a little bit more further before Correct. you're hitting that pump shot. Or... No, there's definitely times that, that we will use the accelerator pump okay. system to adjust. Like if, if your car's a little bit fluttery, um, leaving a stoplight, we would put gap in there, okay. um, things of that nature. Okay. So there are times for that. But for the drag race application, we have found that it, it's the Bam. only time you'd ever put clearance in here is if you were intentionally staging the car bringing it up to say two or three thousand rpm then hitting the gas pedal okay. sometimes on foot brake a true foot brake yeah. car we will run some gap in there because they're staging with the car at two or twenty five hundred and what what that allows you to do is not waste that much of the accelerator pump, shot. pump yes system. i get it i get it so so certain applications foot brake we sometimes will run some gap in there if someone encounters a problem okay um Foot brake is very critical. The car leaves clean for reaction time. Right, right there. Yeah, so you can see this side of the cam is very aggressive, oh, which yeah. is how we run them. But there are applications we flip it over, and then this side you get the same lift, but at a much slower rate. Yep, I see that. And, and so for, per se, a foot brake application, that would be important. Okay. And, you know, like I said before, you know, that, that cam timing is a whole separate entity. You know, and you know there's all the colored cams that Holly has and, and it tells how many cc's over the length of time, you know, in the graph and stuff. And that's, the, the point of that is, is there's, this is a very, it can go anywhere. There's so many different tuning variables yep. on this little tiny specific area, well, you know. We're, we're even working on something new and this is the first time I've said anything about it. And uh, maybe, maybe here in the next couple of videos we'll, we'll show you. But we're working on a carburetor now that has no squirts. They're, they're removed and the accelerator pump system squirts out below the throttle plate. So, wow. So where the fuel comes down now and has to hit the booster, hit the throttle yeah, plate, yeah. It, there's sure, a delayed yeah. time for it ever sees the manifold. By moving the exit of the squirter to the bottom here, um, there's nothing in the way. So you're saying the, the, the squirter is going to be shooting out here? Correct. 
Yeah, but how, think about that. You got flow coming through the Venturi, right? It may not be magnificent, but you got some flow coming. Now you're shooting it below here. To me, I would say that atomization is not going to be, you know. The, the minute it hits uniform. the manifold, it's atomized. The minute, the minute the air picks it up in the manifold, it becomes an atomized fuel mixture. You're talking maybe two inches of, of distance from from here to the. And it, or whatever, it, it, it'll, you know what it'll never make it there. Dry. Yeah. The fuel yeah. heads right towards the runner, just sitting on the bench. Yeah. On the dyno, the minute that fuel comes out, it becomes a mist. You don't even see a stream. See, this is the stuff we like to talk about. Guys love to hear this kind of stuff because this is real world experience that people right. don't talk about much. No, no, and we we do have the carburetor, but it is done and it is functional. We're still working on some tuning. The, the amount of squirter change from here to the bottom is huge. So up here, you might need a 40,000 squirter. Yeah. When you put that to the bottom, you need about a 15. Okay. Um, just because when you hit this hard, I mean, fuel goes everywhere. You know what I mean? It, right. it even splashes outside the carburetor. Um, so. Now, and then here's another point that I, I may have mentioned or I failed to mention earlier, but the bottom line is you also have to put in consideration with the accelerator pump adjustment, not only the cam, but the shooter, the pump shot, yes. which is, that's a whole other topic we can right. get into. I mean, we've all thought about stumble, we need bigger shooters, we won't even, mm -hmm. we'll stop there. Let's not go into that. But uh, that's amazing. Now, one of the things I've noticed from Australia, you, you, you have a big distributor over there. Who is yeah. that, John? Race Max Direct. Race Max Direct. I've seen that they have a carburetor, and I remember seeing one on our tour, like a, a dual. A twin blade. Twin blade, that's yep. it. I, yep. I saw one on their website or something. Yeah, they, they are, you know, we're slowly pushing that product. Um, you know, they're again making sure that we have all all the bugs worked out and everything, but they've had extremely good success with it. Really? Um, it's shown a pretty decent gain over standard four barrel 4150 carburetor. Um, and they'll, they'll probably run with it over there a little bit harder before we sure. start pushing it here, but it is available. If someone calls and wants to buy one, we will sell them at this point. All right, how about this? Since I have that motor, you know my motor's getting redone now, mm -hmm. and I've okay. been running that old 20-something year old Pro Systems car, never had an issue. I have one of your billet enforcers, it's, but it's 4,500. Right. You want to test it and see what yeah, it does? We can run it on that. We'll see, we'll compare it. Yeah. We, 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 did, we did that test on a small block Chevy yeah. here about a week ago, and the big 4150 twin blade, so the inch 600 Venturi, actually equaled the 1050 Dominator for power. You're kidding me. Wow, that's amazing guy by the name of Michael Laws, which was Bolaw's Bola, son, yeah. and he was the original developer of the Twin Blade. Okay. Now, um, Mike sold out of DLP probably back in 13, 16, somewhere in that range, and recently I've worked with him on several, I kind of have him helping me okay. get along with, push some of the development projects, yeah. stuff I've been working for years on, and uh, you know, it's nice to have someone to help you push that so he's been instrumental in, in helping us with that and along the way we BNC was the designer of the twin blade we decided to go ahead and add that to our product line too it is a patent product you know what I mean so it's a it's there's not a, as many people build them because it, it does have a patent and you have to have his permission all right guys so there you go that was just kind of the basics on tuning the accelerator pump now like I said there's a lot more that we're gonna get into and then the videos coming up, including what? The shooter size, the cams, we'll go into that a little more in depth. Once we kind of focus on that and get that part done, then comes a, a real challenge. It's gonna be air fuel mixture and then air bleeds. Air bleed, yes. So, which is, we're not even gonna get into it. We're just gonna tell you that we're gonna, we're gonna cover it. I don't know when or how we're gonna do it, but that information is very, not many people understand that theory or concepts. So we're gonna to try to put it into bite-sized pieces so you can get a grasp on it and know what these air bleeds do and how they affect your performance. So like I always say, stay tuned to Drag Boss Garage where you're always seeing and learning something new. I appreciate you, John Kyle, for Thank coming you. here, or allowing me to come here, I mean, and, and, and make these videos to help not only my subscribers, but your customers. Yep. Customer service is number one. Thank you, my friend. Thank you.